So last Friday, me and a buddy were having some fun conversation talking about our experiences in Unreal and how it's very different from other engines like Unity and Godot. And I just thought this would be a fun topic to just share with you guys because I'm really curious to hear if this is your experience too or not. So full disclosure, even though I'm an indie dev and I know enough code to make a game, I'm definitely not a programmer. I am more of a 3D artist that can code enough to make things happen and finish a project, but I have no shame in admitting that my code programming level is nowhere near as optimal or something made by a real programmer. The point though, despite my lack of being a fully capable programmer though, while I was in Unity, I was still able to make and finish a lot of games. Like I personally used to make a game every two years. In the span of this YouTube channel, I made Vanguard, then Reactor, then Let's Expedite, then Macrophage, and right after that was when I moved to Unreal, and I haven't finished a single project since. <laughs> and my friend's story is even crazier. He's a professional programmer, and he was telling me he used to make three games a year. Like, three in one year. And ever since he moved to Unreal, he has made zero. So something is different about Unreal, and after discussing it with them, one of the biggest differences that we kind of both noticed is Unity and Godot are a lot more hands-off and freestyle when it comes to how to build your shit. So what does that mean? Well, basically, if you learn how to do something in Unity, let's say you make something appear out of nowhere. Now in gaming terms, we call that instantiation, and in Unity, it's one line of code called instantiate your thing at this position and this rotation. So if I wanted to spawn an asteroid in the middle of the world, then the code would look like this. Now, for an indie dev, especially a hobby or a part-time dev, once you learned the instantiation code, you usually were like, oh, okay, I think I see how this works, and you just used it to instantiate everything. Like in one of my first games, I basically used it to spawn the player, spawn the enemies, spawn the explosions when the enemies died, spawn guns, spawn the bullets from the guns, and no, it probably wasn't very optimal, but it worked, and I was able to build a lot of the project really fast once I knew how spawning worked. And even though my code was probably not very good, you know, at the end of the day, four out of five people People said they had a lot of fun playing the game, and for me, that was enough. Now, this is not how Unreal works. You can't just learn to instantiate something and then use that line of code to instantiate everything you need. In Unreal, instantiating something from a random blueprint is different depending on whether you're spawning a character or an actor or a scene or a level or a sub-level or a particle, and it's different depending on what is doing the spawning. Are we spawning things from a character blueprint or are we spawning things from the level blueprint? You know, there's a slight difference between these things and you better know what the rules are or else Unreal will let you know later on. So while in Unity, where you could just build your own solutions, whatever way just works for you, in Unreal, you kind of have to learn the correct way to do it in every situation. So just right there, you can probably see a major speed difference between learning to spawn stuff in Unity as opposed to learning to spawn stuff in Unreal 5. But the thing is, it's not just instantiation. It's it's everything. So let's take another basic example of an important thing that most games kind of need, which is characters and animation. Now in Unity or Godot, when you just want to take a character from a 3D software like Blender or Maya or Cascader, usually what you do is you export the character as an FBX, then you import it to the engine. Easy. Makes sense, right? Well, not in Unreal 5. Because the first time you ever try and export a character into Unreal 5, you will get errors, errors, hundreds of errors telling you your bind poses are missing, your bones are missing. In fact, your skeleton is just wrong. So your limbs are stretching and your proportions are out of whack. Your character is a hundred times too small. The roughness maps are broken. The normal maps are backwards. In fact, the character itself is backwards and facing the wrong direction. There are so many things that can go wrong during import that I spent six months creating debug videos showing you guys how to fix every single one of these errors just so that everybody could know how to get the character into Unreal without it breaking. Let that sink in. Six months to learn how to import the character into the engine. To put this into perspective, in six months, I could have made a whole ass game in Unity, but instead, I learned how to get the character into the engine. Let's take another example of something that you wouldn't expect to be complicated, but kinda is when you get to Unreal. Epic created this gameplay animation sample system, which is the new movement system that was developed for Fortnite that Epic has given everyone for free so that they can use in their games. Now, usually if you're, you know, a seasoned programmer, you have a basic understanding how to do, you know, basic third person or first person shooting movement in a game. You know, it's the traditional eight directional strafing animations and then a few upper body aiming animations 
positions and you kind of just mask the upper body and put them together and, and bam, two hours later you have your movement and you can begin testing the game the next day. Now let's look at the system that Unreal wants you to use, which is called motion matching. But what do we find instead? 200 running animations, 80 walking animations, 54 jumping animations, 9 idle animations. What the f*** is going on? Why are there 200 running animations? Like this is the standard free locomotion system that Epic themselves is recommending everyone to use. These animations don't even look like they loop, so how are we getting consistent cycles? Hold on, the database seems to need this thing called a schema. Why are there so many schemas? What makes them different? Where is the animation tree? What does this node do? What do these nodes do? Okay, these nodes lead to a date. Why are they going to a database? We have a database? Okay, wait, and all this gets fed into a blueprint? What does the blueprint look like? What the f*** is happening? Like, I see the notes, I'm reading them, but I don't understand what they're trying to tell me. Now, I have a buddy who works in an Unreal 5 team professionally, and he told me he spent like three months doing nothing but grinding through Epic's standard locomotion system for things like Lyra and these gameplay animation samples. And when he explained it to me, basically, here's how this system works. There's no more eight directional tree anymore. Epic uses what's called motion matching, which means is you need to create special types of animations that have specifically designed root motion and trajectory baked into the animation correctly. Then you have to designate the left and right foot position, letting the game know when the feet are touching the ground. Then you do all this for all the different types of ways the character can move. So maybe they stop abruptly or they stop slowly. Maybe some of them are slightly tilted to the left. Maybe some are slightly tilted to the right. You make all the different possible animations. And then finally, during gameplay, whenever the player hits a button, the character runs the player's input through a database of all possible animations that could happen. And then automatically selects the animation that most closely matches where it thinks the player is trying to go based on the current input and it uses the feet position and the root motion to figure this out. Once it has found the closest matching animation it will try and blend between those two. And that's how we get this super smooth realistic motion at every point during character control. And don't get me wrong it's really hard to argue with the results and it moves super smooth and super realistic. And after spending a lot more time with this system I've learned that you don't need all 200 running animations and you can actually make this system with a much smaller database. And the more I look at it the more it does slowly start to make sense to me and I'm really looking forward to trying to use it in future projects and yes I know you don't have to use this system and you can just do the standard eight-way strafe similar to how I used to do it in unity but when epic is pushing it as the next big thing at least for me personally it makes me feel like I should be learning how to use it or I feel kind of guilty not using it or just when I look at it and I don't understand it just makes me feel like I'm not good enough to be a game dev, and I know that's dumb, but that's just how it feels whenever Epic is saying that, you know, you should take advantage of this, it's free. And that's just trying to understand Unreal 5's basic movement system. So if we're just going off the examples I've listed, it's like if a new dev is trying to figure all this out for the first time, and let's assume that he's not a successful prodigy, he's probably just trying to learn to do this with his spare time after work, and nobody is paying him to learn any of this stuff, then it's gonna take, you know, a month to kind of get the hang of things and then, you know, a couple of weeks to instantiate things in all the different situations and then probably six-ish months to learn how to import the character correctly and three to four months learning how to walk and run with the new motion mapping system and if you just do the math, then a year of your life is gone and you haven't made any gameplay yet. Like, I know it's crazy, but I remember coming from Unity to Unreal over a year ago, and when I was learning it, I documented everything that I learned with you guys here. Starting with downloading the software, learning the hotkeys, importing and exporting, landscape and foliage, materials and shaders, destructible objects, UI, particle effects, basic blueprint stuff, and we even learned how to do some fun stuff, you know, with jiggle physics. But we learned how to do all that in the span of about a year and a half, and 240 videos later, I still don't quite understand how to control, you know, walking and running. I still don't know how to do any of the multiplayer stuff. I haven't even started any C++ or coding things yet, and I've been here for almost two years, right? Like, see what I mean? That's the thing about Unreal 5, and that's part of the reason why I think development is so slow with it, because when you come to Unreal, you have to learn to do things the Unreal way. It's not like other engines where you learn the fundamentals and then you just start applying those fundamentals to whatever part of your game needs them. And again, this is just my personal take from my own experience, but what do you guys think? 
I know a lot of you guys have your own projects and experiences. How does Unreal differ from the other engines you've used in the past, and why or why not is it more challenging? I'd love to hear your take in the comments below, but in the meanwhile, as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.